guys, vlog number two. Um, before I get into this one, uh, it was a really fun week overall, um, but before I do, I want to um, just mention that we've been working on something um, through the Strength Athlete. Every update with our athletes um, comes with a lot of information and some insights based on conversation. We get into topics on sports psychology, on recovery, on training, nutrition, technique, um, and on down a list of topics. And, and unfortunately, some of those topics never see the light of day outside of those specific conversations. So while those athletes benefit a lot, I feel like a lot of this information was kind of just left um, in the ether, so to speak. So in order for other TSA athletes to get that same information and for people like you to get that information, I've created a series of weekly emails that you get with uh, an amount of information based on a specific topic and then something to do with that information afterwards to directly apply it to your training. Whether it's information on sleep and recovery or studies on motivation or studies on a range of other topics in sports psychology, the idea is to give you a little bit of information every week um, kind of tailored to how to apply this directly to your training and making you a better athlete. So this is all free. Um, I'll just include a link to sign up. You just uh, put in your name, your email address, your birthday, and uh, you'll start receiving these emails once every week with some information uh, about how to connect with your coach better, uh, how to recover better, uh, how to critically think better, um, information on just a, just a range of topics um, that have come up in conversation. So um, please join. Um, I've been working really hard on this, and I hope you guys will, will really enjoy it. Without further ado, getting into the vlog two now. Thanks. Okay, vlog two. Um, it can be hard for me to think about how I want to conceptualize these vlogs. In my mind, I can think of a number of different narratives that I can talk about, each for the same type of information, whether it's talking about technique or how I felt or the trend of progression or exercises or balance in life or whatever else is going on in my life, there are a number of different ways you can frame each of these. Uh, and I think that lends a different characteristic. So I am ambivalent on how I want to go about that. But on the surface level, it was a really good week. Um, this is my third week in a progression of three weeks, this one being the heaviest, and next week will be a deload before we launch into um, something that looks somewhat similar, but a little bit more specific for exercise selection, and um, we'll reset the reps, likely, and increase the loads as we progress our way toward nationals. Programming, for me, with Eric Helms, my coach, hasn't really ever been you know, anything magical or, you know, super novel methods. It's been basic exercise selection, basic progressions, and just working hard. And the combination of that and just maintaining a level of avoiding injury and sustainable training has been kind of the, the secret of success so far. It's choosing some assistance exercises that augment my main lifts and have a goal of increasing muscle mass or um, kind of supplanting some of those muscle groups that I don't normally train from the main lifts in a balanced way. And, and that's been it. Really the only major change that we've made uh, was switching from four to five days a week and adding an extra day of frequency for squatting, going from two times a week squatting to three times a week. And that change was originally aimed at allowing me to balance my work and life schedule better, but ultimately allowed me to recover better from training. That and the move to sumo deadlifting as opposed to conventional deadlifting. So it's been some good days here. Um, those deadlift reps you saw were pretty darn smooth. Um, this is my lighter squad day, so I have three sets of five at 225 and then some bench singles at 190. Uh, but overall, it's uh, it's been some good training. As far as technique, um, because of the leg pressing work I've been doing, I kind of feel like I have my legs more underneath me. I kind of feel like I would like to have a little bit more uh, of my low back in the picture 
and I don't know whether it's that I've just been a little bit fatigued these past um, few days, maybe maybe up to two weeks or something like that. Um, but it feels like my low back isn't all the way there when I'm squatting uh, under some heavy loads. Bench press this week has definitely been a highlight. Um, doing six singles casually at 190 kilos uh, was great. Not to mention three sets of seven later on at 160 or 165 has been good too. And I've really just been trying to be more diligent when it comes to accessory work. Not only in just getting it done, but also in just driving progression and trying to put more weight on the bar. Um, and for you guys who are trying to do that, um, having some way to hold yourself accountable is really important. For me, that's been filming. So obviously I've had to film this stuff and you know, I, I could have just skipped it over and not shown something, but it's on my program. I want to uh, to get it done and, and film it. So that's been one of my methods of accountability, but it could be reporting to a coach or having a friend to do all of your assistance work or something like that. I feel like assistance work gets a bad rap in powerlifting a lot of times because it's the stuff you do after the stuff that's important. Um, but it's really not the case. Um, especially for, for programs that are designed with assistance work in mind. The thing is that assistance work is at least half of the training volume that you do. Um, so if you're skipping out or not aiming for progression on half of the work that you're doing, you're really shortchanging yourself. Shout outs here to Grant Higa who came out to visit and get a little bit of training in. His daughter was doing a massive uh, softball tournament about 45 minutes south of us and he drove up to come get a training session in with us cameo by natalie there getting in some equipped deadlifts and back in her competition equipment for a little while as she slowly works her way toward um worlds which will be in dubai this year so yeah we've got this week we've got next week which will be a deload for me and then we're headed into um just a prep for nationals. I'm really excited about it. Um, on. on the more mental side of things, I've been trying to keep the focus on myself and uh, not worry as much about what other athletes are doing. That's a really difficult thing to do for me. It's kind of uh, ever since I've been nationally competitive, it's been pretty difficult to just tune out the noise and just focus on on me and, and my own performance. Um, so for instance, sometimes you see someone else put up a giant performance and it makes you reevaluate your own performance in a worse light or your own prospects of future chances of increasing strength or being able to place the way that you want to or something like that. Um, it's really interesting because you control your access to that information and as a result, you control your chances of how that might affect your mood. Uh, and at the same time, you control how it affects you too. And I sometimes forget that and just let it get to me uh, and just kind of get in my own head about, you know, my own strength journey and, uh, you know, what's really important and stuff like that. So it's, it's good to have kind of role models of people who are able to just truly do this because they love it and happen to be high level athletes, but also uh, just focus on training and getting better for its own sake rather than rather than because it's going to get you somewhere or for the external reward that might be at the other end of all of this work so yeah it's, it's kind of just been important for me to keep the focus on myself and when I do I'm happier so what have I done um, I've reduced the amount of competitors I've followed on social media to just a few who truly are some good friends you know not that I don't care about the other people, I just don't want to see their performances on a regular basis. And I think that we all have uh, have a right to be able to, to do that and control what we, what we see. We're in this new era where, especially for powerlifting, maybe even bodybuilding and a few other sports that are kind of highly publicized on social media, um, all of people's training is just out there to see. And there's some good that comes with that. You know, you get to see great technique and motivating performances and stuff like that. But if you're a competitive athlete, there there's this double-edged sword where 
you're constantly aware of what other athletes are doing. And um, that's not always the case that training performances translate to competitive performances. So you kind of have to separate, is this what they're going to do in competition? Is this what they're going to do in competition versus me? And just go through kind of a series of reassurances uh, when you need. So rather than doing all that, I'm just trying to avoid the whole kit and caboodle and you know, just focus on me. So um, we're getting into day day four, I believe. Um, I missed over the fact, as I was talking, about the fact that I missed a heavy block pull. Last week I did 370 for a triple and just didn't quite have it this week. Uh, another case where it's just difficult to objectively look at performance and rather than saying, I am a failure, saying there are some external factors that affected me, I was fatigued or I wasn't ready or didn't execute or something like that and not let it affect future training. Um, thanks to Natalie for helping me get in a back offset after that rather than just calling the session um, like I would have done before. So next day, this is three uh, pretty heavy triples for me. This is 270 on the bar. Um, and then I worked up to 275 afterwards, and, and each of these felt pretty darn good. They felt like work, but um, not the usual baggage that I'd say I associate with uh, with training, especially on squats. Um, squats, for whatever reason, seem to be the most emotionally loaded movement rather than any of them. Um, so yeah, it's been nice. It's been really nice having the Elevate Barbell crew here kind of supporting me, even if I wasn't really asking for it. They all came around and spotted me. And, uh, and helped me out. So I feel like that's been a, a really um, important thing. So first time close gripping 170 kilos was today, which is pretty cool. Um, not, a, not a major milestone, but that's three reds in the bar. So it's nice to say that I've kind of checked that off. And then uh, some chest supported row to finish up. Also, actually first week in a long time that I've done um, sets of 10 on pull-ups. So back strength is is really coming away and uh, I'm excited for that. That's going to do it for this one. Um, please check out the email series. Um, please follow, subscribe, tell your friends and I will see you guys in the next vlog.